To start, I want to thank each of you for being part of this important commission's work. And I want to say how grateful I am to Mayor Dean and Judge Dinkins for their leadership. Public safety is government's first responsibility. Everyone deserves to be safe. Every part of our community should trust the police to help keep them safe. But as we all know, not everybody does. We need equal and very high levels of trust and satisfaction with police throughout our community. Now, Nashville residents, and that includes our black and brown communities, do want police protection. When I talk to people, they often tell me they want more police officers in their neighborhood, not fewer. But that presence must, of course, come with respect and fair treatment. You are here as part of this commission to help reimagine public safety and find ways to build partnerships and trust. Your task is to present a unifying vision for how public safety can best serve all of our community to help Nashville be a city that works for everyone. Now, last year, Metro's police officers had 809,000 documented contacts with residents. And policing is often a dangerous job. MNPD removed 2,170 guns from the street last year. And sometimes, 299 times to be exact, last year our officers used force. Sometimes officers are injured or killed. And last year, Officer John Anderson was killed when a suspect fleeing from other officers crashed into his car. And sometimes residents are injured or killed. Last year, two people were shot by police. One person was shot on Broadway after striking an officer with his car. A use of force board, which included Metro Nashville Community Oversight Director Jill Fitchard, ruled that shooting in policy. Another shooting was ruled out of policy, and that officer resigned. Now, each of last year's 299 instances of use of force must be justifiable and held accountable through a careful independent process. The Community Oversight Board exists as an independent body to provide systematic review to make sure that Metro is never engaging in misuse of force. The COB's work is ongoing and permanent. Their independent review of potential police misconduct is an essential tool for accountability and something that our residents have insisted on by a wide margin. Our residents also need and expect to be safe and deserve the highest level of service. Now, over the next three months, I'm asking this commission to examine our public safety effort and identify areas for policy and administrative improvement. Each of you is here because of your knowledge and life experiences. That is what will make this commission special. And as you begin your work, it's important to fully understand how MNPD and other parts of our public safety system currently function. Nuances are important. My staff, MNPD, and Metro Nashville Community Oversight are here to help. By the end of October, I'd like you to present findings for improving police operations and the work of public safety here in Nashville. Look at the evidence from other cities of what works. Identify meaningful, realistic, and productive changes for our next chief of police. Your recommendations will be a blueprint for him or her and for me. Now, this commission reflects the diversity of our city, and it includes a former public defender, legal director, and former mayor, a former district attorney, the chair of the Community Oversight Board, and the chair of the Council's Public Safety Committee, a former state representative and firefighter captain, a judge who oversees the mental health and veterans courts, pastors, veteran civil rights attorneys, small business owners and established business leaders, two police officers and one retired police officer, a fifth grade teacher, a former school board chair and mayoral candidate, a pride board member, downtown and hospitality industry leaders, a major university president, workers' rights and social justice advocates, leaders in the fight against domestic violence and sex trafficking, our juvenile circuit court clerk, a young man who's experienced homelessness, 
and one of our Nashville's most respected journalists. You represent the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim faith traditions and belong to and serve in more than two dozen churches, nonprofits, and community organizations, including the Interdenominational Ministers Fellowship, the Urban League, Gideon's Army, Conexion Americas, NOAA, the National Black Police Officers Association in Slavery, the YWCA, Stand Up Nashville, the Oasis Center, Pride Nashville, and the Saladin Center of Nashville. Now, public safety is a complicated subject, and my staff with the MNPD and the MNCO are here to help. MNPD will provide you with access to information and to senior staff who can answer your questions. The Metro Nashville Community Oversight will provide you with research on how we compare with other jurisdictions. And we've asked them to compare police department policies and procedures to national best practices. I want to thank Director Fitchard and her team for partnering in this work. Recognize what our police department does well. Identify areas where we can do better. Create a blueprint for change for me, for the next chief of police, and for our city. Thank you for your service in this important work. And let me now introduce Director Fitchard. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am appreciative of the mayor for allowing me the opportunity to address the commission today. For those of you who don't know me, I am Jill Fitchard, the Executive Director of the Community Oversight Board and the Metro Nashville Community Oversight Staff. So a little background about me. I have spent over 25 years working in the criminal justice field. My entire career has been one of service to the community. I have policing, probation, parole, and investigative experience, as well as working as a CJ instructor at a small college here in Nashville. I have worked extensively with the Nashville criminal justice system, including judges and public defenders. And I've spent many years training others in the field of criminal investigations. I have worked with many people of this city who are experiencing poverty, addiction, homelessness, domestic violence, mental health and reentry issues, and looking at possible death sentences. I call Nashville home, and I am proud of the work that I have done for this community and what I have accomplished with the Community Oversight Board. But enough about me. We are here today to address what is happening in this city and cities across the nation. We know why we are here today. We are here because there is a crisis in policing. We all have seen the video of Mr. George Floyd, Floyd taking his last breath as a uniformed officer placed his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck. I'm sure we all felt the outrage when we saw that murder happen right before our eyes. And that may not have been the first time that you were exposed to that type of lingering trauma of violence being streamed across the television screen. Nashville is not exempt from that occurring here because it has happened, maybe not exactly like George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, but death of a community member by MMPD has occurred. And because of that type of force and a host of many other challenges that has plagued our city's police department, you are here to review MMPD's policing practices. You are here to deal with policing culture, that a policing culture that must change, a culture that has structural oppression at, at its roots and where systemic racism has been allowed to run its course. MMPD has made changes in recent months to their use of force policies, and they understand that, that there is more room for improvement. I appreciate that they have taken this initiative and we are on board to help them transform and make sustainable shifts. But not only a shift in the structure and culture, but also a shift in the mindset. My hope is that they are ready to embrace this transformation. I'm sure some of you will ask, what does that mean or how does that look? Well, let me tell you, that means significant reforms must happen at the policy level. That also means that we must look at their policing and disciplinary practices, their level of cultural competency, their engagement with the community, and their commitment to accountability and transparency. What that means is that we can't continue contradicting ourselves. We now have the opportunity to do something different, something new. And that is reimagining policing through the lens of equity. We can view policing holistically 
and community driven instead of training only as a paramilitary organization that relies heavily on being punitive. We must think of ways of restoration and stop viewing our community members as enemies and we must eradicate bias-based policing and put a stop to this us versus them mentality. MMPD has to listen to our communities, especially those that are marginalized and disenfranchised. They have to have empathy and sincerity. They have to hear the residents and shift from the mindset of warriors to being partners. There's no room for coldness and callousness when building relationships as partners or guardians. We want our national police professionals to see us, hear us, protect us, and serve us. That us is, you, is everyone equally, no matter what their condition, no matter where they live, and no matter their color or the skin they live in. You are here today because each of you have a unique perspective that the mayor feels could shape MMPD's policing policies. My charge to you is to listen to one another. For those of you with tremendous criminal justice backgrounds, take the time to hear from those who may have lived experiences and perspectives that are different from yours. You are here today to assist with making changes that are intentional, impactful, and will be central to taking our Metro Nashville Police Department into the 21st century and being on the right side of history. So, in closing, I would certainly be remiss if I didn't mention that over 100,000 Nashvillians voted to have a community oversight board, and it is in that spirit of community, partnership and engagement that myself and the COB staff will be available to assist you with policy questions, research and data, and here to be an independent resource to you for anything that may help you reach your expected outcomes. So let's maximize this moment. I will end with one of my favorite quotes by Dr. King in hopes that it will resonate with you as it has resonated with me. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but he must make it. He must take it because his conscience tells him it is right. So thank you for your time. And I just want to take a second to acknowledge um, the chair of the COB, Ashley Davis, on this commission, as well as my Tennessee State University undergraduate professor, Mr. Larry Woods. It was Professor Woods who inspired me to continue working in the criminal justice field and gave me a passion to pursue an understanding of justice. Thank you for your time, and I'll introduce uh, Deputy Chief, um, Interim Chief Drake. Thank you to uh, Director Fitchard for the introduction and your uh, remarks. Thank you to members of the Policing Commission who have agreed to be part in such an important panel that would help ensure our policies and practices make us America's safest city in the 21st century. This is something we take very seriously and are eager to hear your review of our policies and procedures when your work is completed. As Mayor Cooper stated, reimagining how Nashville can build trust and enhance community safety is a vision that I also have as well. Recently, I have begun the task of reassigning proactive flex units to community engagement teams. Flex members were officers assigned to make traffic stops and conduct enforcement strategies in high crime areas. Community engagement teams aim to make connections through uh, community endeavors in those same at-risk neighborhoods. Our goal was to reimagine how we work with communities, tutoring, plan community events, and et cetera. All aid in connecting with communities and have great rapport in communities where they are needed most. Again, to those of you I have not met, I am Interim Chief John Drake. I have been with the police department for 32 years, and I am a resource for you. I am personally looking forward to helping however I can to ensure success of not only this commission, but also to, for the police department for years to come. We are proud of our meritorious accreditation through CALEA at the gold standard. Our police department, training academy, and communications center are separately accredited and are inspected every three years to ensure we are meeting hundreds of prescribed national standards. Only 10% of agencies in the country have, that accredi have this accreditation. 
With that said, we welcome evolution and innovation in the 21st century, and that's what I feel you on this panel will help with. I want to emphasize that we are always looking for ways to do better and be better as a police department. We want to also assist the Community Oversight Board in its requested review of our policies and its work to assess complaints as voted on by Nashvilleans in 2018. I'm excited about our police department's continued evolution, and I hope that, that you join me in that excitement. Again, our police department would be available and open to sharing any information you need, including having personnel present materials and answer questions when requested. Before I conclude, I want to touch briefly on use of force. We train extensively in this area. You will find that our use of force continuum begins with official presence, verbal commands, and escalates or de-escalates to only the amount of force reasonably necessary to effect an arrest. Our training also includes verbal judo as de-escalation, as well as other less lethal options. We have banned chokeholds, have by policy a duty to intervene, to stop any force not required, and a duty to report any uses or misuses of force. Uses of force are reviewed through a sergeant, a lieutenant, captain, commander, deputy chief, field supervisor, chief of police, and if violations occur, we take disciplinary action immediately. All officer involved shootings resulting in death are investigated by, investigated by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Then a force review board is convened to determine if the officer involved shooting was within policy. The executive director of the community oversight board is a member of that review board. There are several layers in an effort to have thorough and review of use of force incidents. I believe in well done is better than well said and we welcome your final report. Thank you and I'm sure I will be talking to at least some of you uh, as you conduct your work. Now I would like to introduce uh, former Mayor Carl Dean. First, let me uh, thank everybody for being here today. I'm Carl Dean, and I'm one of the two co-chairs of the Police Policy Commission. Uh, my co-chair, Judge Dinkins, is recovering from a medical procedure, so I will start us off this morning. Um, I first want to thank uh, Mayor Cooper for creating this group. Um, I think it's very, a very good thing that the community is being asked to participate and to um, find ways in which our police department can improve. And I guess I want to stress that it is our police department, and, and this commission, I think, is very appropriate. As we get started, I want to remind everyone that this meeting and all of our meetings uh, will be taped. Full commission meetings, such as this one, will be televised. Committee meetings will be recorded, but not televised. And I just ask you to keep that in mind as we move forward. I'm going to talk a little bit today about process. Then I want to give you a chance uh, to introduce uh, yourself uh, to, to each other um, and make some brief remarks. Uh, Metro ITS is going to make you panelists, but more on that later. We will have three subcommittees, a Serving Nashville's Communities Committee, a Screening Supervision Resources and Recruitment Committee, and a Policies, Tactics, and Training Committee. This week, I will be working with Mayor Cooper's team to identify a committee assignment for you. We will be considering your interests and expertise, as well as how you can help a committee deliver good recommendations. We will share these assignments with you by Monday at the, at the latest. Most of the work will be done in committee meetings. The committees will meet for the first time next week. Metro ITS has asked that we consider meeting at 5 p.m. They've asked that we not meet on Tuesdays because of council meetings. Wednesday evening, some of our church leaders may have conflicts. That leaves Mondays and Thursdays. When you introduce yourself, um, please tell us what your preferred day to meet is, Monday or Thursday. 
Brianna Crawford is taking notes. She will follow up with you on all of that. She will also be the point of contact for you with questions you may have about your committee. At the first meeting next week, whatever day that it is determined to be, we are going to ask you to focus on process and leadership. Committee staff, uh, commission staff members, John Button, Eric Brown, Brianna Crawford, and Dia Carrillo will suggest a process to you. They've given it a lot of thought, and I think you'll be very impressed by the, by the staff that is helping us with this endeavor. I'd encourage you to seriously consider what they tell you and begin with process and then select leaders. At the first meeting, I'd like you to consider choosing a chair and a writer. Both of these roles will require a lot of work, so when considering who will fill those positions, make sure that person has the time to do it. Um, and if you're considering the position of writer, or, or make sure that people understand that this will involve taking notes, and again, um, something that is very important for us to make sure that we're drafting recommendations and that community and committee viewpoints are, are fully um, heard. Um, you will have help, again, from the commission staff who will support you with that. I would like each committee to strive for consensus when it comes to making recommendations. If there are recommendations you cannot reach consensus on and you're not required to reach consensus, then I would ask you to vote on them following uh, Robert's rules of order. Um, but let's try initially to see what we can agree on. Think about this in a terms of a few different buckets. One can reflect four to five over um, arching issues and early wins. Another can be things the chief can change in the first year to 18 months. And then the final bucket can include recommendations for improvements outside of the police and for the mayor or the city. Throughout this process, I'm going to cons I am going to consider you to be um, evidence-based. Talk to subject matter experts, let's understand what works, and then let's figure out what the most meaningful changes are that we can make and focus on them. Uh, that's it for now, for me, but let's now turn to you. I'd like um, each of you to introduce yourself very briefly. Tell us what day works best for you, Monday or Thursday, and we will try to create a workable schedule. I also would ask you to tell us uh, briefly what you want to see the commission do, what, what you are anticipating, um, and what your area of interest are. I'm going to ask you to speak in alphabetical order. For technical reasons, ITS has divided you into three groups. In a few minutes, they will convert the first group into panelists. Everyone will be able to hear, but only panelists will, able, will be able to speak on video. After the first group finishes, there will be a brief pause, and then the second group will click on a button and become final uh, panelist. Thank you again uh, for your time and service. I know this is a very important commission and that this is serious work that we're doing, and I look forward to doing it with you. Thank you. Thank you for those comments, Mayor Dean. My name is John Bunton. I'm Mayor Cooper's Director of Policy and Community Safety, and I'm going to be facilitating with ITS this next stage of the proceedings. Uh, I and my colleagues, Eric Brown, Dia Cirillo, and Brianna Crawford, are looking forward to supporting you as you undertake this important work. Um, before we get started with introductions, just a housekeeping note. Um, mo everyone should have received a, an email uh, with a link to a survey where we've asked you to rank your preferences for what committees you're most interested in serving on. I believe as of yesterday we've gotten about 25 responses. It would be great if those of you who have not responded would please do that in the next day or two. If this is unfamiliar, if you've not received an email of that sort, uh, please reach out to Briona or to me or Eric. Uh, we will provide that to you. Uh, on to introductions. So in order to minimize the chances of crashing WebEx, uh, we have divided uh, the commission members into three groups by alphabetical order. Uh, you uh, will start with the A's. 
uh, will end with W. Uh, for those of you who are at the beginning of this, and we'll have to get the hang of this, apologies for being at the beginning. Uh, for those of you who are at the end, apologies for that as well. Um, what you do, and we're going to begin with Bob Allen, and at the end of the first group is going to be Rachel Freeman. And uh, you all now, or momentarily, will have the option to appear via video. In order to do that, you will need to press the start video link. Uh, everyone in that first group will then be on screen if you choose to be. Everyone else will be in attendee mode. And um, it's an option. If you don't want to be on video, that's perfectly fine. But it is an option. Um, Introduce yourself very briefly. Please say something that you hope to get from this commission if you choose to. And then let us know what evening of the week would work best for you for, for your committee meetings. Uh, let's start off uh, with Bob Allen. Okay. And Bob, uh, ITS says that you're not logged on to this. If you want to call in, Okay. All right, Bob, we're going to come back to you. We'll move on to Judge Blackburn. Judge Blackburn, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good morning, Judge Blackburn. Thank you for your service on this commission. Could you say a few words about yourself, your hopes for this group, and your availability? Well, um, the general session judge that is over mental health and veterans court here in Davidson County. Um, Monday is my preference day. Um, my hope as a member of this commission is to hear the voices of all our communities and to see the viewpoints of a diverse city. For the past six years, as I, as I said, I've had the opportunity to work with those suffering from mental illness and emotional trauma in the justice system. That work has afforded me the opportunity to see how police interact with these Nashvillians at critical moments of their lives. And I believe that it is a critical part of our work on this commission. Thank you, Judge Blackburn. Uh, Ms. Davis, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good morning. Good morning. Can you please introduce? Right yes. Can you please introduce yourself and uh, talk a little bit about your hopes for this commission and your availability? Sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley Davis. I serve as chair of the Community Oversight Board. I extend uh, my gratitude as well for everyone extending their time, energy, as well as their uh, experiences to this important endeavor. I'll uh, share just right off the top. You know, my, my Mondays are preferable for me. However, I'm also absolutely available on Thursdays as well. And so whenever committee meetings are held, I will absolutely make myself available. Um, I'll begin and, and be quite thoughtful of all of our time uh, here. My hope and goals uh, for this commission is uh, three parts here. I want us to remain community focused and sensitive. Uh, meaning that we are thinking not just about those of us that are privileged to hold these roles as members of this commission, but also those that are not present, that have been silenced um, and not allowed to be uh, heard in this space and have a tremendous amount of healing needed in this space as well. I want us to remain culturally competent, and I recognize that, that is not something where all of us are on the same journey. So I want us to extend to each other understanding and be open to being uh, in a space where we may find ourselves being uncomfortable with the information, the data, the stories, the best practices that we find. But as Director Fitcher mentioned, we are in a very unique space and opportunity to extend to this city something it has never had before. We can reimagine what it means for our police to be both effective, but also have the type of empathy needed to lead in an incredible way. And then thirdly is the community policing part of it, that I believe once we set these first two as foundations, naturally rises from that space. And I, I have to uh, state here that it's okay to have dissenting opinions here, but if that in the end means that we are not looking at increasing police presence, but rather looking at ways that we can better utilize our police in a way that allows our communities to thrive, I hope that 
other members of this commission remains open to that as well. And then lastly here, I just note here that while um, I recognize our request and I have responded to the one out of three committee members uh, membership positions, I do respectfully ask uh, to be uh, considered in place on all three of these committees. And I acknowledge this because of the very unique and community mandated role that, that the COB has in this space. So I look forward to all of you. Hope that everyone is remaining safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Davis. Uh, I, I believe there are uh, a couple of people who've called in. Um, so uh, do speak up when your when your time comes. We don't we don't see you on the screen. Uh, let's move to Mr. Delgado. Good morning. Are you with us? Yeah. Hey, good morning. Thank you also for uh, including me. And I'm honored to be a part of this committee as well. Um, uh, for me, Mondays would be preferable. Um, to answer that question and I'll be brief just uh, my hopes are that one I would actually bring something of value for the committee uh, hopefully a voice from our community not only as a minority but as a minority business owner um, and uh, but also as somebody who recognizes um, that a lot of times with issues that we may have uh, it's it's really policy that need to be looked at not necessarily um, uh, defunding our police department. Uh, I, I'm one that is a, a fan of our officers as well, and I want to help them to have the tools necessary to do a better job of policing and making sure that we're creating a better community bond to where all, all folks in our community are being recognized and being respected as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Freedom Demis, are you with us? Freedom is our youth representative. Can you hear us, Freedom? We will move on. Uh, Judge Dinkins is not here today. Uh, Mr. Esquivel, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Uh, very glad. Good morning. I also very much appreciate the opportunity to serve on the commission and look forward to working with all of you. I'm the pro bono partner at the law firm of Bass, Barry, and Sims. Uh, in that role, I oversee the pro bono work of the firm's 300 or so lawyers, which in large part has focused on issues of criminal justice and advocacy in a wide variety of criminal justice areas. In terms of my availability, either Monday or Thursday would be fine with me. I'll make my schedule work to be available for those committees. Uh, and for the commission's work, there is so much uh, distrust and fear and division and suspicion uh, and inequities, injustices in our criminal justice system and that includes policing, that uh, there's a lot of cause for despair and lack of hope. And I have a genuine hope that this group and the work of this group combined with our broader community will help turn that narrative around and that we can begin to start a new chapter, turn a page, um, and, and have, a different, have a different narrative, different set of circumstances in our community. Thank you very much. Uh, Freedom, have you been able to join our call? Are you online? Uh, can you hear me? We can, yes. Good morning. Uh, well, I'm actually kind of nervous. Um, my name is Freedom Demis. Uh, uh, I hope to bring some insight as to uh, how the youth of, uh, homeless youth of Nashville interact with the police and I look forward to seeing uh, what changes we can bring about together. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to your perspective, Freedom. Uh, let me just go back to the very beginning. Bob, Allen, are you, are you dialed in or have you been able to join this call yet? ITS is... 
Um, I want to go back to the beginning of our list. Bob Allen, have you been able to join this call? Are you are you dialed in? Okay, we'll move on to Dr. Faison. Oh, I'm sorry, Metro ITS is asking me one more time to to try you, Bob. Are you are you dialed in? Okay, we'll introduce you at a future time. Uh, Dr. Faison, are you are you online? I am. Good morning to everyone. My name is John Faison. I serve as a senior pastor of Watson Grove Baptist Church in Edge Hill section of Nashville. Uh, delighted to be a part of this uh, moment and this commission. Uh, very hopeful of its outcomes and its um, its findings and results. Um, Thursday meetings are best for my schedule and goals. Uh, really want to help, uh, if possible, reset the culture of policing in Nashville. We have a unique opportunity, as been stated before, uh, to really kind of uh, impact that. Uh, also, we'd love to create a system or some systems that allow the COB unobstructed ability to perform its citizens man citizen mandated um, role. Uh, COB is important. Uh, it has been obstructed in its um, in its ability. Uh, in, in previous administration. So, uh, and lastly, to help restore community trust in the criminal justice process when it comes to policing. Uh, it's a unique moment. I think uh, it's a pivotal moment and a catalytic moment, and I, I look forward to the work. Thank you very much. Uh, President Fisher, are you, are you with us? Or are you, are you dialed in? One second, we're trying to bring you online here. President Fisher, can you hear us? Do you hear me? Yes, sir, you've just been unmuted. Welcome to the First Commission meeting. Thank you, thank you. I'm uh, uh, especially uh, tech. Ted Poor here. Uh, anyway, thank you so much. And I I just want to say what a privilege and honor it is to be a part of this important work. I've listened to all that, uh, the goals of others, and I share uh, those hopes and dreams for our policing efforts. Uh, I think the way I would uh, describe the day when we're successful is when our police um, roll through the neighborhoods and people smile and wave and they're really glad to see them and, and when we feel uh, that uh, everybody is uh, being uh, treated equally and I think uh, I, I, I'm very supportive of our, uh, our officers and their work and I just know that uh, they are uh, hoping to, to regain the trust of the community. Um, I. Uh, can be Mondays or Thursdays. Actually, you didn't mention Fridays. That's a great day for me, but <laughs> probably not for most of you, as is Saturday. But again, uh, Monday or Thursday, it's just fine with me. And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Foster, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Eli Foster. I am a fifth grade teacher at Bellevue Middle School. I'm also the co-owner of Pieces Training, which is a consulting, education consulting, and trauma-informed trauma approach to understanding the experiences that our youth and teachers go through. In terms of preferences, I'm good on either day, Monday or Thursday. So you pick whatever, I'll go with it. In terms of the hope, I wanted to start with a quote from author and activist D. Ray McKesson. D. Ray McKesson says, hope is not magic, hope is work. So when you ask what is my hope, my hope is that we, all of us representing Nashville, work together for a unified vision about what Nashville can become and the role of policing in what Nashville can become. By having that unified vision Every decision we make as committees is funneled through that unified vision. So that is my hope, that we create that unified vision on what we can become 
role of policing and what we become, and we constantly look through that vision. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fox, are you with us? Yes, I am, John. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, either day, Monday or Thursday, is uh, fine with me. Um, and I'm pleased to join everyone else in this important work. Uh, I'm a financial markets trader, formerly was a journalist for quite a long time. I was uh, chairman of the Nashville Board of Public Education for a number of years, and uh, in 2015 was a candidate for mayor of Nashville. Uh, it was in that race knocking doors where I learned a lot about some challenges in the relationship between members of our community and the police force, especially in conversations with African-American residents. Uh, it was clear that at that point five years ago, uh, there was not the level of trust that is necessary for public safety to be really effective, for people to be happy. And it seemed like it was a day one challenge then. Uh, while I've been disappointed, that's not been a top priority for us, uh, I'm delighted that now it is. And one of the most encouraging things about this challenge, as opposed to some other public policy issues, some of the other public policy issues are are not necessarily solvable. You can improve upon them. You can't necessarily solve them. This is one I think can be largely solved in terms of putting in the right policy and insisting on the right culture to exist within the police force. Uh, and finally, I'm encouraged because I think everyone really has the same objective. Um, uh, and that is, everyone wants to be as safe as possible, and everyone, including the police, want to have the police interfere in people's lives as little as possible. So um, I feel really good about the group you've organized. I'm delighted to participate and hope I can make some useful contribution yeah, in bringing about this improvement. Thanks, John. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Freeman, are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm here. Thank you. It's a privilege to be on this commission with all of you. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity. I'm the president and CEO of the Sexual Assault Center. The Sexual Assault Center is located in Nashville, and we respond to uh, victims and survivors of rape and sexual assault of all ages. And we work with over a 1,000 people a year who need our services in this community. So one of my many hopes in being involved in this commission is that we can elevate the conversation of sexual violence and the significant prevalence that, um, that sexual violence, uh, how prevalent sexual violence is in our community. It's super important for law enforcement to connect with rape victims and survivors in a trauma-informed and victim-centered uh, way in order for us to encourage more and more people to report this crime and to make a, an impact and ending it in our community. So I, I'm very hopeful that this conversation can can be elevated within law enforcement, within the police force, and within the city overall so that we can uh, make positive impacts in this, this horrible crime in our community. And it's one of many things that I'm looking forward to doing with, with the other incredible members of this group. So thank you. Um, and Monday or Thursday, what would be your preference for meeting? I'm sorry about that. Either day works just fine for me. Okay. <clears throat> um, wonderful. Uh, before we move on to our next group, uh, let's try Bob Allen one more time. Bob, have you been able to join us? I think you're unmuted, Bob. You should be good to go now, and we see you online. I think... I think if you, I think you're muted on your end, Bob. I'm feeling confident that you're about to come through here. <laughs> All systems should be go on this end. Can you unmute or speak? Okay. We think that you're muted on your phone or keyboard, so we'll give you we'll give you a few more minutes, and then oh, Bob, can you hear us? Okay. Well, what we're going to do next is I want to say thank you to the first group. Uh, this went well. We're going to take a minute or two break, and we're going to move all of you who just spoke out of panelist mode into attendee mode. And then in a minute, uh, we'll continue this by uh, asking uh, Pastor Greer to introduce himself and, ex and express some hopes.
Okay. While we do that, let me just ask a question. I believe we have three people who've called in by phone. It's harder for us to see you. If you have dialed in by phone, can you uh, can you just tell me who you are so we know who's on the phone? Uh, Bruce Maxwell, Lake Providence Baptist Church. Gary Moore, retired IFL firefighter. Jimmy Greer. Perfect. And. And Pastor Greer, what is your phone number? 615. All right, let me just ask IT, do you have numbers for everyone? Great. Are we ready to move and ask Pastor Greer to introduce himself? Okay. Pastor, Pastor Greer, thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience during this transition. We are good to go for our next group. Uh, good morning. Would you please introduce yourself to everyone and uh, say a few words about your hopes and your availability? Good morning. I'm Jimmy Greer. I'm the pastor of Friendship Baptist Church, 32nd Avenue North. Uh, I am a retired Metro police officer with 33 years of service with the Metropolitan Police Department. I retired. 2004 as the chaplain for the Metro Police Department. Um, I um, hope through this process that Nashville can become a model, a 21st century model for our city. Also with the emphasis on community relations. I, I think that one of the issues that we face between the community and the police department is that we don't know each other. We don't know that the overwhelming majority of police officers are hardworking, decent, honest people who work hard every day to protect us. And the police department sometimes, police officers sometimes, don't know that most people in our communities are upstanding citizens who want to support them, who want them to be safe, and it is our desire to have a relationship with them. I think that's one of the issues that can help help bridge um, any divide between the community and the police department. I am available uh, Monday or Thursday, and I look forward to working with this committee and try to give a perspective from the community as well as the police department as I serve in both capacity. I've served in both capacity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Harris. Are you with us this morning? Yes, uh, I'm Clifton Harris, President and CEO of the Urban League of Northern Tennessee. Uh, Monday would be my preference, and um, I hope you know, that we can uh, look at um, reimagining policing through an equitable lens. Um, I also hope that we can build the implicit and explicit biases that in, exist in all of our um, institutions and our police department not being excluded as well as I hope you know that we can address uh, solutions in community relations as it was just stated you now about and what we also do it you now from a perspective of some finding solutions that offer a sense of empowerment and it's a privilege uh, to be here so thank you for the opportunity Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, Mr. Harami, are you logged on? Yes, I'm logged on. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Nozad Harami. I'm uh, office manager at Salahdi Center of Nashville and one of the founder of Nashville. I'm at board, board of trustees too. Uh, we worked uh, particularly for the Kurdish community, the largest Kurdish community in the United States, and generally for the Muslim community in general. So I'm uh, honored to be part of this commission, and thanks for uh, Mayor Office and Mayor Cooper to create this commission for better service over the city. And uh, I do my best, and I do, I'm pledged, I, uh, it's my pleasure to work with all of you to succeed. Uh, in the, uh, and uh, achieve the goals of the commission. And uh, as a better uh, committee, with, I'm full, full with it, is uh, serving as a Nashville uh, 
serving Nigeria's communities to build more relation with the MLPDC. As the Salahuddin Center in the past, we had a good relation, good communication with the general in law enforcement, especially for the police department. But we would like a community will involved to reduce uh, or to reduce the gap between the community and police department. To police listen to the community and community also listen to the court, to the police, both to dig together, cooperate to serve our city in Nashville. And both of them is okay with me uh, Thursday or Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Huffington. Are you logged on? I can't seem to unmute. Uh, we can hear you. You've done it. Oh, good. <laughs> I was trying to do the video as well, but it's like I'm, I can't seem to get that to work like I wanted to. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mac Huffington. Um, I uh, represent a small business, Mac Productions. Um, I'm also on the National Pride Board, National Black Pride Board, uh, the LGBT uh, National Chamber, and recently a part of Launchpad. Um, so I'm very excited to be a part of, of this commission. Uh, before I forget, Monday or Thursday uh, works. Uh, and my, my hope is definitely to improve uh, community relations. Um, being a part of the community for so many uh, years, it's just important that we empower and uplift and help get um, things here in Nashville with the police department and the community uh, in a more positive um, direction. I think it's very important for the citizens of Nashville um, to, to help grow us grow in that um, direction. And I think it's um, also exciting to be a part, to uh, be able to be some of the voice of the people. The diversity here in Nashville uh, needs to be represented, and that's what it looks like um, this commission is going to do for us. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jackson, are you with us this morning? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning. Yes, good morning. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to come and share uh, on this commission. I look forward to it. My preferences for days are Monday, but I can also do Thursday. I would just like to say that I was so blessed and impressed by Director Fitcher's statement, and I would actually ask that if we could all get copies of that statement, uh, because it serves to me as a great template for the work that we have in, in store for us. I also think that we're going to have to deal with relationships because that's what this whole thing is about, the relationships between the police department and the city, uh, the relationships between each other in the city. Uh, I also represent, as pastor of Pleasant Green Baptist Church, uh, the zip code of 37208, which is probably the most o overlooked zip code in the city, and also um, representing Interdenominational Ministers Fellowship. Uh, I do believe that we need to embrace the issue of race and not overlook it, but to actually just embrace it and talk about it. Uh, and we can't do it successfully, I don't think, without doing that. I look forward to meeting everyone and working along with each other. And I appreciate every person's uh, presence on this, on this board. Thank you very much, Dr. Jackson. Mr. Johnson, are you with us? I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, I'm Tory Johnson. Uh, I was district attorney for almost 27 years and uh, uh, didn't run again in 2014. And since then, I've been uh, a law professor at, at uh, Belmont's College of Law. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Mondays and Thursdays are bad for me because I have two classes. I have a, a 6 to 8.30 in the evening class on Monday and a class that doesn't get over until 5.45 on Thursday. So I may be a very uh, a brief member of this uh, commission, but, uh, I'm, We're gonna but work I, it out. I, I just I just don't have a way of, uh, there's nobody that can, can handle those classes or swap those classes at this point. We've already started meeting and so forth. Anyway, uh, but if there's something, I, some way I can join or, or do whatever, I'm happy to. Uh, I think this commission is, is something that is just reflective of what Nashville has done 
uh, for years and years and years, and that is to come together as a community, as a diverse community, as an increasingly diverse community, and uh, and try to find a way to solve problems. And, and I think this is a, a great example. I just echo much of what's been said by the, the previous commission members, and uh, hopefully I can keep, be a part of this. Thank you very much. We'll definitely work out these logistics. Uh, Ms. Kaladimas, are you with us? Hello? <laughs> Hi, Demetria. Uh, we hear you. Hey, John. Great. Um, thank you, John, and, and I want to thank the mayor for the opportunity to contribute. You know, <laughs> as a journalist, I've had a different sort of exposure to police and access to information. And I've also been a conduit to the community through my reporting. So I look forward to using a journalistic approach to explore new ideas and the persistent problems we've been grappling with for so many years. But this is going to be tough, and I'm going to say this. I'm disappointed that I've already heard criticism of our group as just another task force. So I challenge my fellow members to make sure we are anything but that. There is true expertise and talent here and an opportunity that may not come again. So I'm looking forward to being part of this group. Thanks. Great. Monday. And if, Put me in the Monday column. Monday. Great. Uh, yeah. Ms. Ms. Lucas, good morning. Are you with us? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? We can. Hi. I'm Amanda Lucas, and I want to thank uh, Mayor Cooper. I'm honored to be a part of this commission. I'm an LCSW psychotherapist in private practice, but I've worked in or with many in national systems, including juvenile court, the public school system, community mental health, and substance abuse treatment. I actually started my career as a fully sworn law enforcement officer in Atlanta in the early 1990s as a state parole officer. While certainly not with the frequency of police officers, I was charged with executing arrests in my community. I was brought on at a time when the culture of the institution was shifting from a more punitive to a more rehabilitative approach, which led to a significant drop in recidivism. So I feel like I have a unique perspective having worked within all those systems. My hope is that our commission's work serves to implement those policies, practices, and cultural shifts that create accountability which is what prevents misconduct and brutality in uh, criminal justice. I hope we can acknowledge those officers who serve with honor and integrity, as well as acknowledge that our black and brown communities have been harmed by our current policing practices. And that was a recommendation actually of Barry Friedman and the policing project who came to Nashville a little while back. I hope we can reevaluate how we reallocate uh, or how we allocate resources in our community so we can meet our needs for safety and security, absolutely, but also other crucial needs such as social services, affordable housing, strong public schools, access to health care, and the like. So thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be a part of the commission. Thank you for being a part of this group. Uh, Mr. Matthews, good morning. Morning, John. Thank you. Uh, and like so many of my colleagues here, I too am grateful for the opportunity to serve on this commission. Um, I am Lionel Matthews. I am the Davidson County Juvenile Court Clerk. I am also a former Metro Council member representing District 1 for eight years. And I'm a former uh, director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhoods and Community Engagement. I, uh, I prefer Monday on, on the preference of days. I, my hope for this commission is that um, is, is, I have a couple of hopes. My first hope is that we're able to address any explicit and implicit biases in police and policy uh, and without any systemic racism that exists uh, within policing uh, first. But I also hope that we could be an example for how we can examine and root out systemic racism uh, in government broadly uh, in other areas like education, uh, in other areas of the criminal justice system, uh, and, and uh, other areas of government. My second hope is that uh, we elevate the work of the Community Oversight Board and not usurp uh, that, that board that was established and 
uh, approved by the citizens of Davidson County. I hope that we are able to empower uh, their work and, and give them the uh, catalyst and the light the fire that, that will sustain their work long term in the city. Uh, I hope that we can empower our communities and make sure that they have a voice in whatever recommendations come out of the work that we are doing as a commission. But I also hope that we give our, uh, our men and women of law enforcement the ability uh, to, to lend their voice to how they see that policing can improve in this city. And I hope that we're, like it has been said before, I hope that we're all open to what change looks like. I hope that we're serious about uh, causing change and, and uh, influencing change. And I look forward to, to working with uh, this commission. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Maxwell, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm sorry that I was not able to join you all by uh, audio. Is something wrong? I don't know with the computer or the host just, just didn't send the audio part. But uh, I am hopeful uh, for this commission that we can come to an agreement and the right person will be con uh, connected to our city that will show the compassion and the understanding that needs to be shown to every citizen of the community. Either day, Monday or Thursday is good for me. And what I will be working toward is trying to uh, trying for all of us to create unity on the ideas and everything that are involved as far as electing our next uh, police chief. And I pray that we will do that with a lot of compassion and that that person that is uh, selected will be one that will show that level of compassion and love for the community and also to not look at it from the standpoint of view of what color a person's skin is, but to look at equality. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Miller, good morning. Are you with us? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Okay. I am uh, Reggie Miller. I am president of the Nashville chapter of the National Black Police Association where I served as local president here. I've served at, on the regional level as president and also as the national president uh, for the National Black Police Association. I've done uh, 28 years on the Metro Police Department and the last five years uh, been at the FBI Violent Crime Task Force and before that uh, 17 years as an investigator. Uh, my first thing I would say is that Thursday, Thursday would be better for me. However, if it is going to be Monday, I will make that work. I'd like to say thank you for allowing me to be part of a panel that uh, I definitely believe with the people that we have on this panel that we definitely can expect change. Uh, what I would like to see is, is to have the hardcore um, communications and conversations that we really need to have. I think that we can all acknowledge that there's a national crisis in law enforcement in this country. I think that Nashville is, is part of that national crisis as well. I think that uh, if we don't make the modifications for equity and diversity and inclusion, uh, we're going to be going down a very hard road. It's going to be tough to come back from. I would like to be able to see us to be able to facilitate change, change for the better, change for the community, and not necessarily based on color or creed. However, we do know that some of the antiquated um, policy models that Metro have have to be reformed. And if they're reformed, then we can achieve balance and equity, both um, in service and to the community. Uh, I would like to see some of the systemic inequities uh, change. I think that will come about if our reform involves community policing. Uh, I think Pastor Greer hit it on, on point basically by saying the community don't know us and we don't know the community. We have to get back to community policing. 
that is going to be the key to success for Metro Police Department to have the community to feel like that they are trusted. And if that happens, uh, I think that uh, with great leadership, uh, uh, a chief that has a servant leadership uh, attitude uh, with community policing in mind, I think that we can achieve the goals of public safety for all of Nashville. So that is my goal. That is what I would like to see. And to me, there is no doubt that if we put our heads together, thinking caps on, that we will achieve those goals. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Moyadeen, good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you, and I appreciate this opportunity uh, to be on this commission. And I truly look forward to hearing the viewpoints um, of the other members of this commission. Um, um, again, my name is Sabina Moedin. I'm the executive director of the American Muslim Advisory Council. We're a statewide organization, but most of my work is in Middle Tennessee, and I work with all the mosque leaders and all our community members to really um, empower them uh, in the community. And so uh, my best day is Monday, uh, and but my hopes for this commission is first and foremost is that whatever recommendations come out of this um, there's some teeth to it um, that it leads to real change but you know looking at uh, and especially in the muslim community and other minority communities how can we build better relationships how can we lift their voices and uh, really hear the concerns and um and 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 tailor you know uh policies that um, it builds trust. And that, that means um, looking at policing practices, but looking within the department and uh, the racism and, and lack of cultural competency that exists. And, you know, really, if we're talking about building better trust, we, we really want more of our community members to to enter into the police department, but does the culture uh, exist within it to um, support them and, and so that we can re recruit them, but then we can retain them. And so uh, those are uh, some of my hopes. And, um, and I just, again, as a background, I also do diversity training, uh, cultural competency training with the cadets um, every six months, but we, we hope to, um, make those trainings um, on a more regular basis for all officers. But those are my hopes. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moore, good morning. Gary, can you, can you hear us? We're about to unmute you. Stay with us. Okay. Oh, there you are. Uh, you can hear me now. Yes, sir. Okay, great. First, uh, the, the day, uh, Monday or Tuesday, uh, 13, one will work. My purpose will be Thursday, but I'll make either day work. Uh, I am uh, a more retired Metro firefighter with 32 years on the department. I spent uh, eight years in the state house. Uh, 32 years with the fire department. I worked the inner city my whole career. So I work right along beside police officers on a daily basis and working in the inner cities. Um, my concern is, and my first part, let me say thanks for the opportunity, but it's my hope that we look at both sides of the equation. Uh, so far, most of the conversation has been about how we change the police department, and certainly that needs to be addressed. But I would also suggest that we look into how we change the communities. And the, we need to do that by simply looking at addressing housing issues, education issues, um, you know, job opportunity issues, other issues that directly affect the communities that have an impact on the community itself and also on the relationship that they have with the police department. So I hope that we have a broader look that we look at the community as a whole, as well as looking at how we can change the police department for the betterment of the citizens of Nashville. And once again, thanks for the opportunity to serve. Thank you, Mr. Moore. So we've now reached the end of our second group. Uh, we're moving to our final, what's gonna be our final group of panelist speakers. 
So let's take a break for a minute, have a sip of water, coffee. ITS is gonna is going to to uh, switch our, our final group of commission members into panelist mode, and uh, we'll be starting in a minute uh, with uh, introduction from uh, Lashawn Oliver. So enjoy a relaxing forty five second break. Mm -hmm. All right, team, are we ready to start with Mr. Oliver? Mr. Oliver, are you with us? Hey, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the mayor um, for allowing me to serve in this important commission. Um, it was an honor. Um, I've been a member of law enforcement for 15 years where I started my career at the University of Tennessee, my alma mater um, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and since 2011, I've started at Vanderbilt University as a police officer. Um, this has been a noble profession, something that I've enjoyed doing. Um, my available day, so I can get that out of the way, is Monday. Um, but um, that's my preference. I'm also available on Thursday, DB. Um, but I hope to be able to contribute or at least accomplish one as a citizen person foremost in Nashville, someone who voted for police oversight board here in Nashville, the COB, um, to create transparency is to also continue to work as a citizen to both as on the police end and a community member to create that trust and transparency so that we can have the type of culture and the men and women that serve our city that we are proud of and trust that um, they're working towards the aim of keeping us all safe and that we're all contributing as well as citizens to keep each other safe. Um, as a police captain at the Beckwith University for Public Safety, one of the things that I emphasize in my role is community relations and crime prevention is the importance of the six pillars from the 21st century community task force um, that was found to discover that if we implement these type of strategies within our community, not only do you gain that type of trust, you see crime Reduce, but you also are able to have an environment in law enforcement where people work with you to get the type of outcomes and create a safer environment. So I truly do believe in those six pillars outlined by the community uh, task force of 21st century policing. So that is my goal is that we can implement it and make it a reality here in Nashville. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Espino Cano, are you with us? Hi, good morning. Uh, buenos dias. I'm Juliana Ospinacano, and I'm the Executive Director of Coalición Americas. Uh, we are a statewide organization based in Nashville, here at Casa Safran. And our mission is to build a welcoming community and create opportunities where Latino families can belong, contribute, and succeed. Every year, we assist over 9,000 families um, in their desire to start their business, improve their English, help their children succeed in school and go to college and become an integral <laughs> part of Nashville. My commitment is to be a thought partner and a collaborator with all of you and to provide an authentic and grounded voice, while at the same time elevating the needs and concerns of immigrant origin families with a special focus on safety and trust for all. I look forward to working in partnership with all of you, but specifically with the Community Oversight Board to empower such an important body to carry out their vital work. Uh, Mondays work um, best for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Ponder. <laughs> Phil, can you hear us? Now, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Good. Good morning. And it's truly an honor to be on this commission. Uh, we thank you so much. 
Uh, I do want to tell you that Monday would be the best day for me, but I can make Thursdays work if necessary. And I noticed that my phone number was not on the list you sent out, so if you just make a quick note, this number is 615. Send out an updated list. Say that uh, I have been a resident of the Nashville area for over 60 years. I served uh, two terms on the uh, Metro Council, and uh, in the process, I have had uh, work on many different commissions uh, of different interests uh, throughout uh, Metro, and I've been a basically a community activist, having served on many, many boards and uh, community activities uh, throughout the uh, years that I've lived here. I have a vision that this commission will develop the first steps toward a highly respected police force. And I'm talking about both locally and nationally. So much so that we will have a police department that is a model for other cities. Again, it's wonderful to meet everybody and to be a part of this commission. Thank you very much, Councilmember Pulley. Good morning. Thank you, John. Appreciate that very much. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, I would say Thursday would be my preferred date, although I could do Monday, so really give my uh, a preference very little weight whatsoever. Um, I'm the public safety chair uh, on the Metro Council. Uh, my background is primarily criminal justice as I spent 36 years in the, in the business as a firefighter, police officer in a, in a city comparable to Nashville, state trooper, and the majority of which was, uh, was with the FBI as an agent here in uh, Middle Tennessee. Um, so I retired and was elected to council at the same time uh, and, and chose to do this Metro Council gig is a full-time job so that uh, I could better serve the community. What I plan to accomplish here, uh, well, I think we see life through our own lens. Everybody's perspective is shaped by who they are and their life's experience, and I think it's very important that we all do our very best on this very diverse group to hear all of the diverse perspectives included in this group as we share our own. Uh, I think police culture is extremely important. Culture really drives policing practices. And I think it's important for us to understand all we can about our existing police culture as we develop policy recommendations wrapped around the kind of police culture we envision for the future of our city. I was also glad to hear Mayor Dean talk about evidence-based discussions in his opening remarks, as it is critical that we use evidence in our discussions as far too often talking points tend to rule the day, uh, which really ignore evidence in politics. So I'm grateful and excited to hear from all of you, hear your perspectives as we move forward and look at successful best practices in our peer cities that we can bring back to Nashville. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Pulley. Uh, Ms. Quinn, good morning. Good morning, John, thank you. Uh, and thanks to Mayor Cooper for the opportunity to serve on this council. Um, I am inspired um, and hopeful, frankly, from everything I've heard uh, this morning on this on this call. Uh, Mondays or Thursdays, either one work great for me. Um, I am currently the CEO at End Slavery Tennessee, which is a direct service nonprofit for victims of human trafficking throughout Middle Tennessee. While we served victims in 19 counties last year. Uh, most of the victims that we're working with, um, the survivors of trafficking are coming from uh, Davidson County. And so we are kind of on the front lines with law enforcement, with our Metro police officers, uh, kind of on a daily basis. Um, I probably am gonna wear two hats in this committee. Um, uh, one will be my, my hat as a victim advocate, um, as, um, uh, the leader of a nonprofit that serves um, uh, women and children, men and women and children um, who have been um, impacted by sexual violence. 
Um, many of these come from our marginalized populations, um, and it's important to, um, to have that perspective, I think. Um, I think Rachel Freeman will also bring a lot to the table um, in that regard. I also want to talk about that trauma response that Rachel talked about, um, that trauma-informed and trauma-responsive um, approach to law enforcement um, and crime victims. I also want to flip over and talk about uh, the extreme trauma um, and stress that police officers are under every day. They are also disproportionately impacted by, by trauma, um, by carious trauma and trauma that they experience um, as a police officer. The other hat I'm probably going to wear is a law enforcement hat because I spent 26 years in law enforcement, five and a half years with a uniform um, agency at the Cobb County Police Department in the metro Atlanta area before moving back home and hired on with a TBI. I retired after 21 years of service with the TBI in 2018. Um, so I understand what it's like to be a woman in law enforcement, to face unique challenges as a woman in law enforcement. Um, and so I'm very interested in not only talking about how uh, policing impacts cultures and race, but also genders, um, and specifically gender-based violence um, and harassment, both within the department and external to the department. So I, my hope, I guess, is um, that we continue to seek a safer and safer Nashville for all, all of Davidson County residents, um, that the broader community has faith um, in that policing model, um, and that we believe that it serves all citizens within Davidson County. Um, my favorite quote is one by Will Rogers, um, and it's, even if you're on the right track, you will get run over um, if you don't move. And so while I think uh, so much of what the Metro Police Department does is really good, um, they do a great job in so many aspects of policing, um, it's unrealistic to think that there's not an opportunity for us to move the ball down the field. And so I look forward to the opportunity to work with this commission um, and with all of you as we continue to move that ball down the down the field and realize a safer um, and more equitable policing model for Nashville. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Ms. Bilal Reddy, are you with us? I think you may be muted. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can, good morning. Great, uh, my name is Mira Bilal and I'm so excited to be part of this impressive team that's creating a new vision for policing in our community. I am an attorney and I am founder of Women's Health Care Initiative and I have spent many years involved with the Family Justice Center movement and opened one of the first Family Justice Centers in Texas in 2005 when we were put in a position to recreate the relationship between police, victims of domestic violence, perpetrators, and the trauma that occurs in that relationship. I know that many of us um, quest that all citizens have equality under the law and are treated fairly. And so it is my hope that using national best practices that we make our community safer and instill trust in all uh, law enforcement and in turn our government. I think that um, I also would like to create um, really a new culture between citizens and police officers today and I think that everybody that's part of this team is going to have an open mind so that we are able to do that. And my best day is Monday, but I can also do Thursdays. Thank you. Ms. Robertson, are you with us? Okay, I'm muted myself. I can't seem to get my picture showing, but that's okay. We can hear you. Okay. I'm Sharon Roberson. I'm the president and CEO of the YWCA Nashville, Middle Tennessee. We provide more domestic violence services than any other organization in the whole state of Tennessee with a 65-bed shelter as well as wraparound services. 
In addition, the YW sponsors programs with a girls as a girls Inc. affiliate in the over 20 metro public schools, and also with our homegrown and men together initiative in over 20 schools. So I also represent many of the young people that are part of our community. Uh, the YW's mission statement is eliminating racism, empowering women, promoting peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. And I am very hopeful that this uh, panel or this this or this group will keep all of those uh, words in mind because I do believe that a lot of what we are lacking is that we do not see everyone in this community having the right to be empowered or having justice or having freedom. I would have to acknowledge all the wonderful things that the Metro Police Department has done in recent years involving victims of domestic violence and also involving our children in the Metro Public School System. Uh, the lethality assessment program that the YW does in training police, uh, the Men Together partnership, as well as the wonderful Handle with Care program the Met with the Metro National Public Schools. Also, trauma-informed care. I want, although I am saying these programs are wonderful, I've had enough interaction with our police and doing my, in, in this position that I'm hopeful that we not only have wonderful programs written on paper, I want to make sure that all the police officers receive the training and support necessary to implement all the wonderful programs that we list and wonderful initiatives that we list. So that is my hope for the community. Uh, Mondays are my best days, but I can make Thursdays work. Thank you very much, Ms. Roberson. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Robinson, are you here with us? <coughs> yes, sir, we can. Okay, great. Uh, good morning to everyone. My name is Blake Robinson. I'm an attorney here in Nashville. I have practiced all, for almost 30 years. Um, much of my practice has been uh, criminal defense work. Um, so a lot of what I have done in the past and my experiences have involved law enforcement and dealing with law enforcement. I'm hoping that um, my experience in that area would bring a, a voice. I am excited to be working with everyone on in reviewing the policies. Um, I'm going in open-minded. Um, I think we should all do the same um, and not um, judge the department or anyone before we have the opportunity to see that for ourselves. We'll all have our different experiences coming in and I'm looking forward to hearing everyone else's experience. As for meeting times, um, Mondays are probably better for me, but I can also make it work on Thursdays. Um, I look forward to meeting everyone um, and working with each of you. Thank you very much. Ms. Sigenthal, are you on the call? Oh, we think we may. Can you, can you, yes, can you we can. Me? We can. Good morning. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, my name is Beth Sigenthal or Courtney, and I am managing partner uh, for Finn Partners, which is a um, communications firm with major presence here in Nashville. And uh, I'm a native of Nashville and have worked on lots of community initiatives and um, really appreciate uh, the invitation to participate in this really critical work for our city. Um, I would just say that Monday night is probably the best option for me. And I think in terms of aspirations for this work, I think that a couple of things come to mind. Number one, I hope that we can forge some very sort of tangible results that, that, are, that are expressed uh, to the community in a way that builds trust for all sides involved. As everyone said, we have lots of different perspectives, and I think the more that we respect and then take into account the perspectives of everyone, uh, the more we'll be able to create a broader community trust for all participants. So thanks again for involving me. Thank you. Mr. Sherrill, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, first of all, I would like to um, 
thank the mayor for um, allowing me to be a part of this commission. I'm also privileged to serve among so many distinguished individuals. Um, I am the uh, CEO of Imperial Cleaning Systems, which is a janitor and restoration company here in Tennessee. I'm also the CEO of um, the Dream Initiative, which is decreasing recidivism through education and mentorship. Um, we're taking a holistic approach to um, reentry, um, housing, um, workforce development, and education. And I also run a nonprofit, Impact Youth Outreach, and we deal with inner city at risk kids through our partnership with Juvenile Justice. Um, I'm one of two, I think, returning citizens on this uh, commission, and I truly believe that I will bring a unique perspective um, to the commission, and I look forward to working with each and uh, everyone. Um, what I, Mondays is great for me, and, um, and my hopes um, um, with this commission is that we're able to uh, bring a, about sweeping reform that will be um, uh, conducive for success, especially as it pertains to um, policing in the community and establishing trust um, back um, uh, in the hearts and minds of the residents in the community. Uh, I'm from the 37208 area code, highest incarceration rates in the country. Um, I know what it's like to, to deal with Metro, but I'm going into this with, um, uh, it's not all been negative and I'm not going into this uh, you know, with a bias, I'm going to be very open-minded, um, and I just look forward to seeing the change and the lasting change. And uh, my last point is that um, I look forward to working with the uh, Community uh, Oversight Board and ensuring that what they were established for, that they're able to um, do their job. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Mr. Talbert, good morning. Are you with us? Good morning. I am with you. My name is Daryl Talbert. Uh, for the record, either Mondays or Thursdays will work. Thursday is preferred. I am currently the president of Icon Entertainment. We operate a number of different venues in the downtown Nashville area. Prior to that, I've enjoyed a 30-year career in, in municipal government. Um, I think I share wholeheartedly most of the goals and and visions and dreams of the group that we put together. And I thank Mayor Cooper for allowing me to participate. But what I would like to bring to the table is, is again, that evidence-based approach to problem solving and confirming and making sure along the way that we're taking any and all policy adjustments and holding those up against um, a true measurable outcome environment and making sure that accountability was mentioned earlier. And that's truly important but as we do policy shift, I think it's important to take those who have, you know, call, had a calling into public service and giving them the tools to be successful, to understand what is expected in terms of that culture that we're trying to build within the community and within the department. And most importantly, remaining focused on one of the objectives, which is laying a foundation for a new police chief to come to a world-class city and continue to develop and build a world-class department. Um, like everything in life, not everything in the department is good, but at the same time, not everything in the department is bad. They have um, a high level of success in terms of functional disciplines as defined by CLIA. Um, so to the degree that we can introduce community-oriented policing, but done doing that in such an environment where we remain cognizant of budget constraints, community constraints, and demand for service, um, these are all equally important and equally challenging. So to the degree we can, um, my hope is that I'll be a catalyst for conversation in terms of implementation and measurable outcomes and just share a different perspective as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Turner. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks to the mayor, mayor's office, uh, all the members of the commission. Uh, our work's going to be hard and yeah. complicated for sure. Uh, but I think our goal should be simple, improve and uh, provide public safety for all in Nashville. And that's what I hope we work, uh, work towards and accomplish. Uh, and then Monday and uh, Thursday, either one, uh, work for me. I prefer Thursday, I think, but can make Monday work. Thank you much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Turnley, are you with us? Very well. Good morning. 
Good morning. Could you go? We can hear you loud and clear. Do you want to introduce yourself and share some hopes? Yes, my, and, name is, my name is Larry Turnley, and I'm, I'm the outreach coordinator with Gishy's Army, and also a returning citizen and a convicted felon. And my hope from this process is the police officers find confidence and support in speaking out against wrongdoing that's committed by their co workers. And Monday or Thursday is all right with me. Thank you very much. And Ms. Washington, can you hear us? Are you with us? Yes. Good morning. Hi. Um, good morning. I'm Whitney Washington. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm an organizer with Stand Up Nashville. Um, and um, either Monday or Thursday works for me. I think maybe Monday might be a little easier. Um, and my hope for this commission is that it reflects the work already uh, established in Nashville, like by groups like the Community Oversight Board, um, and that we really support uh, that group. Um, and that also we are open to listening to uh, community members as they have made clear what their priorities are in terms of community safety recently. Um, and I'm uh, glad to be serving with such an interesting group of people. Thank you very much. Mr. Woods, do you want to bring us home? It's in state and federal court in this region, and for 48 years, I've been a professor of criminal justice at Tennessee State University. I've lectured to, I hope, contribute to and train thousands of criminal justice professionals over the years, unfortunately, we lose too many of them going out of state after they graduate. They need to stay here. We've got a unique opportunity on this commission. It's unique because we're living through historic times. The nation has demonstrated every night, we see it on the news, they're ready for changes in the criminal justice system. We've got the unique opportunity because we've got a new mayor and we've got a new police chief. And probably for the long term, most importantly, We've got a new community oversight board that can institutionalize and use and develop the work and product that we deliver to the mayor and to them in this process. We need to change policies for the Metro National Police Department. We've got a lot of positives in the police department. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of negatives. If we want to decrease the negatives and improve the positives, policies are going to have to change. Number one, we need to finish adopting the eight can't wait policies. Number two, we need policies of more administrative and more management training. We do a fairly good job training the rookies at the police academy. We don't do a good job when we promote those officers up to management level. Doesn't matter what policies we recommend or the mayor or the city council adopt, if we're not getting good super. <laughs> Third, we need to improve recruitment for the Nashville Police Department. Uh, we don't fund it well enough, and we don't, well, we need to rethink our psychological standards that are required for new recruits and rookies. Number four, we need to rethink the level of cooperation that we provide to federal law enforcement immigration agencies. I know it's at a fair minimum now. We need to reduce it even more if we want to gain and keep the community's trust. Number five, we need to re-examine how we enforce narcotic drug laws in this community. We're doing a very poor job for decades on that. Number six, we have a new policy, an expanded policy, about public access for the community to dashboard and to body camera videos. Mr. Pulley's right, Council Member Pulley. Mr. Fox is right. Mr. Moore is right. Mr. Ponder is right. We've got to not only reset the culture for the police department, we've got to change and hopefully improve the expectations of the community giving them access to the body camera videos will do that. They'll get to appreciate what the dangers of the job are. They'll get to recognize who are good officers and who are not good officers watching those videos. Number seven, we need more community policing that Reggie Miller talked about. 
We need everything from more offices on the streets and in the community to we need better lighting. Uh, evidence driven, data driven, the criminal justice field is full of the evidence about what lighting changes do to crime and criminal law enforcement. Number eight, we need more support for the community oversight board. For those of you worried that our commission be one more group meeting where we create a lot of general policies and everybody forgets we ever existed six months from now, that won't happen here. If we're specific enough, the community oversight board can take what we produce and deliver and make sure month after month, year after year, that our kind of recommendations are followed. So we've got a grand, great opportunity here as to when we can meet. From my point of view, I can meet on Thursday nights. I cannot meet on Monday nights. For 48 years, I've taught a uh, university graduate course uh, on Monday nights and still do. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you all for your time this morning. We've heard a lot of common themes. It's going to be very helpful. Uh, I, I want to encourage everyone who hasn't expressed their committee preferences to look for that survey monkey poll. Uh, do share that with us. If you haven't received it, please reach out to us. Uh, our team will be working with Mayor Dean to assign people to committees. Uh, we will have that to you um, no later than Monday. Uh, we'll be mindful of of meeting preference times. If it does turn out that Monday is best for certain groups, we may probably won't start this Monday. We want to make sure that we make good use of your time and that we're fully prepared for everything. But we'll have further communications on that um, by the end of the week. Thank you all for your time this morning. Mayor Dean, any, any concluding thoughts? No, just thank you for everybody for uh, participating. And I look forward um, to working together and I do think we can uh, come up with some strong recommendations um, and very specific ones. So thank you and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you everyone. Have a good rest of the day and I look forward to the work ahead. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.